So this is from Ronnie Rocky Road. It's a great name, dude. It's a great name. <laughs> I've read that some panels don't last very long and start to have faults. Did you do any research as to the life expectancy of a solar panel versus the cost effectiveness compared to a generator? Uh, cost effectiveness, not really for the generator because I knew I just didn't want to run the generator or I wanted to run the generator as least as possible. Mm -hmm. um, cost, well, I can tell you that when we bought the first solar panels for Delos leaving Seattle, I got two 200 watt panels. They were close to $800 a piece. Mm -hmm. When we were in South Africa, we found these, which are just Canadian solar, seem like a good brand, 310 watts each, and they were about $250 a panel. So the capacity over, what, eight years went up by, you know, 30% and the price dropped by like a factor of three. So they became more powerful and much cheaper. We got the scratch, scratch, scratch a dent special. I mean, he offered us like, this one has a scratch in the paint and has a ding on the panel. I was like, I don't care, they still work fine. Um, so I think we did get quite a good deal on them, but uh, I think most panels are good for, you know, I think eight years or something before they lose their efficiency. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a couple hundred dollars each, I mean, the way it's, uh, we used before the solar, we used to have to run, the, the recommended generator running time for Delos is two to three hours a day. Right? It's a lot. So if, it's, it's quite a bit. So if you think about it, you're burning one to two liters of fuel per hour. That's six to eight liters of fuel. Is that math working out right? Three hours? Yes, yeah, six, six liters of fuel per day, mm -hmm. let's say. That's $6 a day in most places. So it's uh, $180 a month. You can easily pay for the panels in a couple months yeah. just on fuel. And maintenance and generator running time and noise and it just makes sense and with the same question for uh the lithium batteries so lithium batteries they last well nobody really knows how long they last because there's claims of 5,000 cycles mm -hmm. which if you're cycling them once per day that's 5,000 days that's somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 300 days per year what is that over 10 years yeah yeah um but nobody's had them on a boat that long uh at least that i'm aware of to know if they'll last that long but they say they should um the cost is uh three to four times more than a conventional battery so these particular batteries retail are like 900 to a thousand dollars a piece yeah. whereas a standard battery cheap end might be $200, more expensive end might be three, $350 per battery. Uh, we have replaced the batteries on Delos three times along the trip. So if these would have been available in the beginning, they would have already paid for themselves. Yeah. And we'd be just over halfway through the life of the battery. Um, so I think if you're going to have your boat for a few years and you want to make an investment, I think it really makes sense. Um, if you're gonna sell your boat next year, I don't know, maybe it's a selling point or you get a slightly higher price yeah. or, you know, I don't know, that's that's up to you, but it's long-term investment. I think it's totally worth it. And they're super new. Yep. Problem. But Daniel Parker asks, wire gauge from panels to MPPT charger, two batteries, thanks. Ooh, put me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> I think it's four or six gauge. Whatever, look in the table, rated for 50 amps of current, and that will be the gauge. Just do it by current. I can't remember exactly, but I think it's something like that. All right. Vinny Yao. Any special considerations for mounting that spoiler on Delos? I like that it's in the stern, so it's out of the way. But is there a concern about high winds? Any lessons learned or things you would do differently? Can we get a look at how it's mounted? Yes, we'll take a look. This arch was on Delos when I bought her. Um, I think it's an okay design. Actually, what are the ones that we've been seeing on the other MLs? The it, Atlantic, adjustable ones or yeah. something, yeah. Atlantic something something. 
we'll have to Google search that and put the link down here. But uh, it's basically an arch that has a, a set mounting pattern like this, but it's adjustable across the beam of the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, and you know, we've seen them on Amels, we've seen them on Benetos, like Genos, all sorts of sizes of boats everywhere in between. Yeah. And they look pretty cool. They're made out of aluminum, I think, mm -hmm. so lightweight and strong. Maybe look into that. Okay, this is from Ben Brosemle. I don't know if I pronounced that right. What do you need the generator for that you absolutely can't power off solar, wind, hydro, and battery? Okay, uh, for us, dive compressor. Yep. Uh, mostly because the locked rotor current on the dive compressor is something ridiculous like 600 amps and so we couldn't find an inverter that could supply that initial burst of current needed to start that it's a gigantic AC motor and even when it's running it still pulls two and a half to three thousand watts of power so we could deaden we could get decrease the capacity of our bank quite quickly running the dive compressor so we run the generator for that and also the water maker yeah. um, so the water maker is also a big unit it takes 2.5 kilowatts also but it also produces 160 to 180 liters per hour of water so it's a, a big unit um, so big basically an AC so big high draw AC items we run off the generator yeah washing machine I think we could run the washing machine off the inverter. I think we could really? too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think we just don't have it wired up that way. Yep. Yep. Okay. I just have a question of, like, Delos is set up in a way that it is really power hungry, and we use we use a lot more power than probably other people who aren't running full production studios and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But how how much more power hungry is it to compared to say a normal a normal maybe you know two people well, living on a boat i can only speak to my experience on delos and the changes that we've made have probably tripled our power consumption so i think that um uh running the laptops and you know three different wi-fi networks and you know the the 21 terabyte wireless storage array and you know four laptops running all the time inverter on everybody's doing whatever i mean it's a lot of power um i think we probably use definitely double than most boats at least yeah maybe triple Everything's electric too. Electric toilets, you know, electric water pumps, uh, electric stove, everything. Yep. Okay. Because I know, like Peter and Octavia said, they don't even have a generator, right? Yep. They just have an alternator crazy. on their main. Well, I think that's kind of the next question coming up. Yeah. So, what would we need to do? Maybe for what would we need to do to? not have a generator on to us. Yep. There's there's one more in between though. You ready, Blue? Yep. This is also from Ben. I think I know the answer, but could you see a hy hybrid electric motor system working in an offshore sailing scenario in the near future? Uh, I think that the energy density of even lithium batteries is such a fraction of what fossil fuels are even discounting like waste and heat and everything for the type of sailing we do right now I don't think it's a reality and the, the major reason behind that is range so we sort of have this minimum range that we need to be able to motor and sometimes that's you know 150 miles 300 miles there's been times in Southeast Asia where there was either no wind or contrary winds for like two months or three months and you're looking at trying to make passages between islands that are you know two or three hundred miles you're either forced with the option of not moving the boat which is not ideal because then you really are stuck yeah or motoring and burning fuel and um, I think for a boat 
like Delos, uh, we would have to go with a, a hybrid option. So I do think that hybrid options are realistic because then you can supplement the range with power generation. Like you can use electric motors sometimes, and then when your power capacity gets down, because we're talking about a lot of power, we're talking about like, yeah. you know, 10 kilowatts, 20 kilowatts of power going into these motors. If you have one or two kilowatts of solar, you're putting in a fraction of the power required to move the boat. So you'd literally need to sit for like two days, charge, and then go. Yeah. Uh, so what are options? Lighter boat, smaller boat, uses less power, um, more solar, or hybrid. Yeah. Uh, in which case you can run the electric engines when you need a longer range and then not, you know, you can run off electricity when you're just motoring, you know, from off the anchor or onto the dock from sailing or something like that. Um, this is from Bro NYC 123 uh, he, lost a, he asked a lot of questions, but one of them that stands out and we didn't cover yet. I know your boat is power hungry. Have you thought about moving to more efficient gear, hydraulic or other? Could you see a day with no gen set? Yes. Uh, and I think what we're sort of thinking about when we're putting plans into the next version of Delos would include uh, uh, space to be able to mount, I think, two, a minimum of two kilowatts of solar panels, basically double the capacity we have right now. Mm -hmm. If we were to do that, then we would be able to increase the amount of lithium batteries because it would make sense because we could actually charge them. Right now it doesn't make sense because we don't have enough solar to, to top them off all the time. Um, as far as gear that you could use more efficiently, uh, I think you could go with a smaller dive compressor that mm -hmm. would be able to run off of an inverter. It would just take longer to fill tanks and also a uh, a DC powered water maker. So yeah. if we went with the water maker, uh, it would be a fraction of the capacity that we now have, but we would just run it for, you know, four hours a day instead of, you know, 20 minutes a day or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You run just it. run it off the solar. You just run it off the solar. Yeah. Um, other than that, I think everything else, I mean, is pretty, pretty efficient, really. The electric furlers, we use a fraction of the time. It's just changing sails, the winches are the same. Um, yeah. So this is what he's doing. He has a 50 foot sloop and have decided to go with solar and a large 200 amp backup alternator on the main just in case. Yep. Any thoughts on the pitfalls of a system like that? He has six 4D lithium batteries with 1000 watts of solar and it's split 12 volt, 24 volt system. So I think it's a great I think it's a great idea. I think it's definitely doable as long as you watch out for like all the little places that, that power goes, like leaving your laptop running all day or yeah. you know having random Wi-Fi networks running or ice machine or you know I guess these are somewhat luxuries that you don't need to have, right? Yeah. Make sure you switch all your lights to LEDs. That's a huge one. That was a huge one for us. This is from somebody named Alex. How big is your fridge freezer compared to a fridge we land-based folks have? <laughs> what kind of consumption consumption does it use comparatively? Uh, I think the freezers are actually pretty good size, right? Yeah, they are. Should we just take some shots and show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. freezer. So we have. So you can pack quite a bit. It's pretty deep in there. It's pretty big. Pretty good freezer. Just for scale size, let's see what is this. This is one pack of bacon, so you can see that it's that way, that way. I mean, we can fit quite a bit of ice cream and ice and good stuff. We've never wanted for more freezer space. No. Fridge space, maybe, I mean. Because there's the same freezer right here. Yeah, we have another one that turned on. We, don't, we don't turn it on ever. And then the fridge, I think, I think that's, the fridge is maybe half 
the size or a third of the size as a household? I would fridge? say a fourth a of the size. I would say I don't know. a third. I haven't lived in a house in a long time. A third to a fourth. Yeah, definitely. The fridge is pretty high. small. Yeah, but I, guess I mean, we'll snack here. Don't oh, okay. But we still have room for coffee. <laughs> and uh, we have four to six people on the boat, and I mean. Sure, we don't refrigerate everything that says it's supposed to be refrigerated, but I think, you know, whatever, we've never gotten sick. I think it makes a big difference. If there's four of us, then that fridge is totally fine. Yep. If there's six of us, the food goes very quickly out of that thing. Yeah, especially uh, if you want to refrigerate veggies, if you're going on a long passage or something. Yeah. But we try to keep as many, we try to buy unrefrigerated eggs uh, and almost all vegetables and then we'll refrigerate some of them initially just for storage and then eat them yeah how much does the entire solar mounting structure weigh i know that each of the solar panels weighs 17 kilos so that's uh, what is that 17 times 3 34 51 kilos mm -hmm. in solar panels Plus, the whole structure is probably another 40 or 50 kilos, I would guess, for the arch. So, what do we have to? 100. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. I'm guessing 130 or 140 kilos. That's Sick, it, man. Heavy. All right. Well, that was quite a bit of uh, <laughs> quite a bit of talking. Um, a lot of knowledge. Yeah. I hope that uh, you all enjoyed that and thank mm -hmm. you for watching and I put some links in the description to where you could find the gear that we used on Delos yep. and links to prices and all that and uh, if you have any questions ask away ask away we'll see what we can do <laughs> okay all right <laughs> thanks guys bye lock it up if you like the video and you like the topics please uh, be sure to like it on YouTube leave a comment. That really helps us to know whether we're on the right track with making the videos that you want to see. And most importantly, we're still releasing videos on a weekly basis. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do it. Make sure that you get all the videos uh, from us as a notification. And it really, really, really helps us in our YouTube demographics and stats and things. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one.